I'd like to call the December 3rd, 2013, Longmont City Council meeting to order. This is a regular session. Could we please start with a roll call? Mayor Coombs. Present. Council members Bagley. Here. Christensen. Here. Finley. Here. Levison. Here. Moore. Here. Santos. Here. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. Let's stand for a pledge of allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Anyone wishing to speak at first call, public invited to be heard, will need to add his or her name to the list outside the council chambers. Uh, only those on the list will be invited to speak at first call, public invited to be heard. Speakers who do not place their name on the list will have the opportunity to speak during the public hearing items this evening or at final call, public invited to be heard. I don't believe we have any public hearing items this evening uh, on any items at the end of the meeting. So, Sarah, are there any agenda revisions or submissions of documents? No, Mayor. Okay, is there a report from the city manager? Uh, yes, Mayor Council, we have a couple of items we wanted to present tonight. The first is um, Bob Allen on the uh, snow plan that we have and okay. considering tonight's weather, I think it's a good time for the discussion. All right. Good evening, Council, uh, Mayor, Council, Bob Allen, Public Works, Natural Resources, Operations Manager. Um, I was asked this afternoon to prepare a brief presentation on our snow and ice plan, so I don't have anything real formal here, but I do want to walk through some of the higher points and, um, and give you some timely information now that we have a good snowstorm accumulating. Thanks. The, um, Cities maintain the snow and ice plan for as long as, um, certainly as long as I've been here in this format. And I think at one time we presented it at about every, uh, every fall to council sometime around October, <clears throat> excuse me, in November. And uh, we kind of got away from that and started emailing it to you. So um, it's on the website and I'll email it tomorrow morning to you in this format. It's a kind of a nice clean PDF document so you can go through it. But the plan, um, as you can uh, imagine, is intended to try to maintain our transportation system in by and large the condition that we would have it without a snowstorm. Um, obviously, that's <clears throat> impossible for some events, but uh, for many, we, we do a pretty good job of getting pretty close to that. Um, we, we do tend to have um, flexibility within the plan, so the little bit I'll show you tonight is uh, very, um, um, I guess, an estimate of what we do, um, and often residents do read it and ask us why we didn't do certain things that it said we would do. and. Um, and we have to explain often that it is a flexible plan and that it's something that, uh, in fact, we often do much more than what it says here. But um, if I can get it to scroll down, which I, there we go. Um, the plan is, um, starts, there are a couple, a couple of main components to it. Its objectives are the main piece to the plan, and we do adhere to this as close as, as we can. I mean, we really want to keep the roads open. Uh, the main focus, as you can imagine, is on emergency services throughout the city, city services, keeping the sanitation um, trucks rolling, fire and police, um, hospitals and schools, you know, emergency facilities open and accessible without much problem. So um, without a doubt, everything uh, focuses on those elements of the plan. Beyond that, then, we work on conveniences for the residents as much as we can and for people getting around and, um, you know, maintaining transportation in and out of the city and through the city. So um, we, we do have, and this is where it gets a little more flexible, is in our four deployment levels, and typically, the zero to six inch deployment is the most common one um, that we have in Longmont in Colorado. And that is um, really a, um, a full deployment for us. It's going out and plowing uh, throughout the storm until it's finished. And then typically, that's the end of the work for that type of deployment. And, um, and you know, that does vary by weather or um, temperatures and wind conditions. But by and large, that's the most common thing that we face. So tonight we have a, um, a winter storm warning. We have um, a prediction of 8 to 15 inches of accumulation. Um, that's been increasing through the day. So we're more into this level 3 deployment. And level 3 deployment is similar to the 0 to 6 inch deployment. The difference being is that after the storm is, after the snow is done, the accumulation is complete, um, we still have more work to do. And this will be 
probably a, a typical example of that. I imagine that we will be doing additional ice removal and ice mitigation. We may have to remove some snow in some of the downtown areas and areas, parking lots where we need, um, need access. So I would expect that this will be a typical level three type of deployment. Level four, um, greater than 15 inches, may cause us to get further into residential areas, um, neighborhoods, and um, a lot more work, including the possibility of bringing in contractors to help, um, because it may overwhelm our, our internal resources. If, um, I don't know if you, you read the report in the newspaper that we were actually working on this plan when the flood hit, and that, that's about the time we start working, which is in uh, September, to revise the plan. Uh, we tweak it every year. But in effect, um, the flood deployment was really very similar for us um, to what we would have in a major snowstorm. So we're pretty well equipped to do that, and that's why we're able to get into these rolling 12-hour shifts, which is what we do um, in a level, really a level two, three, and four deployment, but predominantly in levels three and four. Um, probably the most interesting part of the plan then is, is the map that shows our plowing areas. And um, we have this divided into two major areas. The first one are the main, what we call the looped routes. Uh, these are the main arterials, and we continually just keep moving through those. If we're not moving through those, it's because we either had equipment failure or we're refueling or we're um, changing shifts. But we, while the snow is ongoing, we continue to plow those areas. And we use what we call our wing plows, which you know can cover the whole couple of lanes of traffic and really move through there pretty quickly. Then the rest of the, the map is really um, what we call the area um, routes, which are more around emergency services, schools, um, fire stations, um, public buildings, areas where you know the public obviously wants to move in and out of. <clears throat> and you can see the areas on the map. It's obviously going to be easier to look at the map um, in, in a file, and I will email it for that purpose. Um, also, again, it's online, so you can see it in that fashion. Uh, we tend to tweak this a little bit every year, depending on um, what we find or learn from our, um, from our route drivers. We always find something different or a, a way to improve how we may circle around a, a school zone. Um, we change the downtown area, not so much what we plow, but how we might move through there. Um, depending on the feedback from our drivers. So it's, it's always changing a little bit. But um, as I mentioned, it's been in this form for at least a 10-year period and probably quite a bit back from that. Um, the other thing we do um, that is something we started doing last year, and I saw an article, in, the, in fact, actually it was a news report um, the other day where they were using brine from cheese manufacturing process in Wisconsin and using that on the road. And the purpose for that is the brine is a different product than what we call our ice slicer, which is a magnesium chloride product. It's a pretreatment product that if we, we find if we put it down on the road before the storm starts, that it, it will uh, keep that initial freezing from being very severe or maybe not occurring at all. So our staff um, experimented with that last year, and they liked the results. And we uh, constructed a brine tank and, uh, and fill it with a a brine product, and uh, we're now pre-treating some of these major arterials that you see on the map. So we'll continue to work through that. I imagine with time, better products will come out, and that process will probably get more effective. Um, I imagine someday we'll see a, a, a scenario where the technology advances to the point where we can eliminate ice on the road altogether. Um, probably not in my career, but maybe maybe soon after. So. Um, and with that, any questions or uh, curiosities about our program? Councilmember Bradley. Thank you, Mayor Kermes. Am I the only one that finds this funny? So we're cheesing our streets. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> Wisconsin cheese, no less. Well, it, we're grinding it. Yes. All right, so so kids, take to the streets. Get your get your cheese whiz, and let, let, let's do some good tonight. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, just to comment, just as being a resident here for, I don't know, 33, 34 years, I've always thought the city of Longmont's done an excellent job in snow removal. So. Yeah. And, Mayor, I, you know, thanks for, for that. Um, we have, in, in the operations division, we're about 110 staff. And 
and that's across parks and utilities and streets and everything. Um, and, and that's down from what we were at one time, but we get a lot out of that staff and they work extremely hard and they're very dedicated. Um, I came back to my office at five this evening and I saw you know, 15 trucks there um, from guys who'd come in at about four that were ready to go out and deploy. So um, they really are the uh, the heart and soul of the program, and I'm I'm proud to be able to present this really on their behalf. So, right. Thanks. Yeah, I guess one other comment. You know, sometimes I've gotten some feedback when we've had a really light snow and we're expecting you know warm weather in the next day or so, and people say, well, why aren't is this the trucks out sanding? And, and stuff, and it's just that sometimes it's better to save that money for the bigger storms. And yes, yeah, and that's that's reading the weather conditions, and um, exactly that. Often, it's better to, to save your resources where you most need them. Yep. Councilmember Nelson. Yes, and I'm, I'm glad to get this presentation tonight because uh, I've been contacted by some Silver Creek High School students who asked this question about why aren't you pl plowing every residential street the minute we get two inches of snow, and I will loop back and uh, send them. Well, are you going to, I guess you're going to send this to us as a link, and I'll just forward it on to them and, and let them plow through the report. <laughs> well said. Thank you. And also, just uh, additional information, um, that information is on Facebook and Twitter, so folks can have access to it. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions for Bob? No, see me. So before we go to the second item, um, I was just notified uh, of a request from the DDA. Um, in the past, um, downtown, uh, the DDA has offered free parking with no time restrictions on Fridays um, to allow folks to um, shop downtown for the holidays. Um, they would like to extend it this year as well. Typically the process in this, as I mentioned it to council uh, in this meeting and, uh, and see if there's any concerns. If there's not any concerns from council on this, uh, then we will move forward in terms of free parking or no time limit parking on Fridays. Sounds like a good plan to me. Great. Um, next item is Sean Lewis um, attended uh, a train horn noise meeting yesterday. Um, on, on my behalf, we were actually prepping for an economic development meeting that we had today. So I want, I'd like Sean to give a brief overview of the meeting. Thank you, uh, Harold. Mayor, members of the City Council, uh, yesterday, as Harold mentioned, there was a small group meeting um, with Senator Bennett um, in Fort Collins with the communities of Windsor, Loveland, Fort Collins, and um, and ourselves, I think, were the, the four main cities that were represented. Um, essentially, the uh, senator was there to inform us that the rules um, regarding train noise, um, which were changed a few years ago, um, that require about a 20 second um, before entering an intersection, uh, trains have to blow their horn for 20 uh, seconds and, and blow it continuously through that. Um, in a community like ours with, I think, about 21 um, railway crossings, I could have that number wrong, um, that obviously there a tremendous impact. But for communities like us, um, the senator was informing us that the rules would be o reopened um, uh, and it, for, so we could discuss that. And so we gave input and feedback in terms of our communities and what we, we um, thought um, were the needs. Um, just as by way of background, as you also may know, in 2010, the city of Longmont underwent um, an analysis of those intersections and what it would take to establish quiet zones, which part of the new regulations were new requirements for establishing quiet zones. Um, that would uh, mean that the trains did not have to blow their horn if you did certain um, improvements at each intersection, gates and, and other warning systems. Um, at that time, that cost us was about $6 million, um, so obviously a, a high price tag. Um, and at that time, there were no federal funds that were identified um, to help pay for that. Since that time, Windsor actually has received a grant, um, a Tiger grant, um, to help pay for those improvements. And so we're also looking at that, but also kind of watching them go through that process. Um, there were really two main points that Longmont um, brought. Number one, just the feedback that we've received from our citizens, both through a survey that was done in 2010 
information um, about the fact that this does hinder residential development, as well as some um, recent discussions that we've had with developers um, with the First and Main, um, pro different projects around First and Main, about the fact that in their minds as well, um, the train noise um, is a deterrent to economic development. And then the second one was that flood recovery efforts in Longmont in particular, the high cost of those efforts um, that will, where we will be tapping our street fund for many of those um, flood recovery projects, that really that's the same source of funds that we would be using to help um, establish those quiet zones. And so uh, now more than ever, um, we emphasize the need for federal assistance um, and grant funding sources um, to help pay for some of those uh, improvements. So I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Councilmember Santos. Thank you, Mayor. Um, did the Senator get any time frame? Yes. Um, Mayor, um, Councilmember Santos, um, I believe that the rules will be opened. Um, looking at my notes, um, will be open within the next uh, three months. Yes, by the spring, actually by the spring of 2014 um, is when those are expected to be opened. And so that will be the time that the, they'll begin to take comment um, from communities. And when do they expect those, they're going to be expecting comments, when do they expect any potential rule changes to be implemented, if any? Unfortunately, I don't know that, but I can certainly try to find that out. It'd be good to know. Um, okay. okay. Thank you. Councilmember Levison. And uh, was there any indication? I mean, I don't, I don't know how we could have any kind of reasonable expectation that there would be forth forthcoming grant or even matching grant funding. I mean, they, it, it seems like back in Washington they can't decide on how to spend any money. Um, but it, did the senator give out any hope for having any allocation for grant funding, even matching grants? Mayor Councilmember Levison, um, there was no indication given um, with regard to that, but I might also mention that um, we are represented on the North 287 Coalition um, of cities, which are very active in this process, and that is one of the main components in terms of their lobbying efforts and their um, advocacy efforts is trying to identify funding sources. So that's something that um, the mayor and I, um, and I believe now Councilmember Santos maybe as well, um, will be attending those and can continue to push for that type of funding. And one thing that I'll um, do this week is contact uh, National League of Cities staff that work with both the Transportation Committee to see where, I know that it's been um, raised in the Transportation Committee a number of years, and I know we have several members on the Steering Committee there from Colorado. I think Bob Briggs, from uh, council member from uh, Westminster, is on the Steering Committee, and uh, we do have advocates um, for some of those lobbying eff efforts. And if we could even find out a date certain, we could maybe get the resources National League of Cities to lobby on our behalf or maybe uh, get a way of presenting some evidence. Thank you. Any other? No further comments, Mayor. I guess it's time for first call public invited to be heard. So uh, Strider Benson. Hi, y'all. Uh, Strider Benson, 951 17th Avenue. Um, I think I had something to say tonight, but I had a major concussion on Sunday from a concrete impact. And quoting the words of our former president, I got misunderdiagnosed by the ambulance medic, and we agreed that if I could make it home, I should go home, which I did. I didn't realize how badly hurt I was until Monday I tried to wake up and I slept for 30 hours straight. So it was probably a good thing. Um, so consequently, uh, whatever it was I thought I had to say, uh, let me just bring up, I would like to acknowledge and honor the wonderful performance we had last month by the Longmont Youth for Equality gave their life story presentation at the Longmont Theater, had a packed house, 400 people there, and just a great performance showing the strength, the intelligence, the dignity, 
the passion, the public service, and their dreams of creating a better society and the beauty of themselves and their presentation from our immigrant youth. Probably those uh, DVDs soon to be available for members of the public who sadly missed this wonderful performance. And um, I hope it uh, comes out and we have access to it because it's a great honor to them and to our city. Uh, thank you much. Thank you, Strider. Okay, that's the only person on the list. So I guess the next is the uh, consent agenda. You want to introduce the items? Mayor, your first item on the consent agenda is item 9A, ordinance 0-2013-78, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the city of Longmont to lease the real property known as Advance Brand Municipal Airport Hangar Parcel H-28A, the premises, to Kane Cobert, tenant, public hearing and second reading scheduled for December 17th, 2013. Item 9B's resolution R-2013-116, a resolution of the Longmont City Council authorizing a loan from fund balance in the city's fleet fund to the Longmont Urban Renewal Authority, providing repayment of the loan from the Longmont Urban Renewal Authority. Item 9C is Resolution R-2013-117, Resolution of the Longmont City Council approving an intergovernmental agreement between the City and the St. Vrain Valley School District, RE1J, concerning the allocation of Longmont Urban Renewal Authority tax incremental financing revenue. Item 9D is approve and authorize the Mayor to sign the 2014 contract for services with the visit with Visit Longmont. And finally, item 9E is approving the um, City Council meeting dates for 2014 with a suspension of rule of procedure number 25. And staff does not wish at this time to pull anything off the consent agenda. Councilor Levison. I'd like to pull both B and C for discussion, please. So I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda minus B and C. Second. Okay, let's vote on that. Passes seven to zero. And Mayor, item B is um, resolution 2013-116, and Jim Golden is here to answer questions. Director of Finance. Councilmember Levison. Um, so I guess I I just wanted to um, get um, a feeling from you uh, about how soon there will be funding coming to pay back these expenses. Um, and and then I have a, a question for um, City Attorney May about um, if he has a guesstimate of the 2014 expenses. May I come with members of the council? I'm Jim Golden, Director of Finance. Uh, the Ur Longmont Urban Renewal Authority currently would have no source of revenue. And in the immediate future, uh, we, we would be repaying these dollars from the bond proceeds uh, once those uh, that that debt is issued, which um, you know, at this point is probably sometime in the second quarter of next year, and then moving forward from there, the uh, the only other revenue source for for LUR will be when the increment begins to actually generate uh, after the mall is redeveloped and uh, exceeds the amount of uh, level of sales tax. Uh, currently generated as well as the amount of debt payment that would uh, be, need to be made annually. So after that amount, there, there's an amount that does go as well to the um, to Lura for their expenses. So. I guess when would that happen though? Assuming that the, 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 um, the loan would be taken out or the bond issued by, the, uh, taken out by um, the special district. And then Laura would. I'm just looking for the the flow chart. Who gets paid first? Well, the loan. Uh, th there's no. Spe the special district is not taken out a loan. Okay. okay. This is uh, the city is actually going to be issuing the COPs. Okay. Uh, the debt service on the COPs will be repaid by uh, tax increment revenues. Uh, who gets paid first will be the debt holders. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that. Um, the city, the Laura will be able to get revenues toward, towards it, its expenses at that point as well. Timetable is uh, is probably 
uh, you know, today, I mean, we all know about the, the delays here, so it's, this is all just speculation right now, but uh, after uh, um, the revenue begins to generate within the mall, at the mall, it's going to take over a full year, and it's, we don't expect that the first year of collections would generate enough dollars to uh, cover debt service. It would be first, the second year, which would be the second, first full year of, of sales and use tax revenues is uh, when uh, there would be uh, dollars probably covering the debt. And then from there, it really depends on how much, um, how built out is, is the mall and uh, how much revenue it's generating. So we did uh, um, uh, speculate or project that it would be with, uh, within two years after uh, the, um, the mall is opened. So. so would this debt be subordinate to, well, I guess, so, let, let, I'm, let me go back and start. Go this debt will be repaid from the from the bond right. proceeds. So this okay. debt will be repaid, and we're scheduling to be repaid by uh, third quarter next year. Okay, that's what I want. So all of all of this, including whatever might come in the uh, the third loan in 2014. Third quarter, right? Yeah. Okay. Fine. And then I guess um, I wanted to know if we had an estimate on those 2014 expenses. Mayor and Council, Eugene May, City Attorney. Uh, could you specify which expenses? Councilman Levinson. Thank you, Mayor. I, I'm just assuming that most of these expenses are legal expenses, and um, I mean, my assumption was they were mostly legal expenses. Am I wrong there? I'm not sure exactly what they cover. I can tell you what the legal expenses are and what the projected legal remaining legal expenses are. So today through October 31st, uh, our legal expenses, including experts and appraisals, has been approximately $275,000. We do have a three-day commissioner hearing scheduled for December 11th through 13th. Our special counsel has conservatively estimated that that will cost uh, up to $150,000. We have a five-day trial scheduled in April for a jury trial for final just compensation determination. Uh, again, a conservative estimate is up to another $150,000. Okay. And then, so, Jim, the additional, um, the difference between the number you're giving us and what Eugene is just other incident, incidental expenses then? Oh. The dollars are practically all legal expenses. We're, we're we're estimating higher because we don't want this fund to be in a deficit. So the loan's a little higher than what we are projecting for expenses. And so what we're really looking at is when um, that the, the fleet fund debt would be um, closed out sometime in 2014. That would be the plan. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. I would move uh, resolution 2013-116. Second. Let's vote. Passes seven to zero. That's Mayor Lewison. Thank you, Mayor. So I also have a couple of questions regarding um, this. Um, the IGA for the TIP, TIF revenues for school operations financing. Um, I guess one thing that, and I'm not familiar enough with this kind of, I don't think we've seen this kind of uh, um, IGA um, before. What I was um, reviewing, and I read it a couple of times to make sure I, I understood the flow of it, um, is it a standard thing to have a subordination clause on page three of the agreement, page 45 of the packet? Um, there, it talks about subordination, um, and it is article, yeah. it begins um, on item eight, page three. It says that, um, that uh, we can subordinate the payment 
of their uh, the payments of the TIF increment for the mill levy override. Um, so it doesn't actually. One thing that concerns me a little bit in the language of the the uh, subordination clause, but also um, they have to give they have to give written consent, right, for the uh, subordination, but it doesn't have any um, clause regarding how much notice we would give them and any kind of um, other kind of procedure. And I'm just wondering, you know, if we're if we're going to ask, I mean. They won't just know that it's going to be subordinated. They have to agree to the subordination. But is there some standard notice clause? I, I didn't have time to go and you know look at state law on urban renewal districts. I don't remember seeing anything the previous times I've read the urban renewal law and whether or not we want to write in some kind of a notice clause that you know we're going to give them notice of. I don't know, 60 days or 90 days that that we would like to have the um, the increment because I think that's what I guess I want to make sure that I'm understanding that. Can we take the increment without their permission if we don't have the, the debt? It doesn't meet the debt obligation. Mayor Coombs, members of council, I, I'll let the attorney jump in here, but let me clarify a little bit about the scenario here. Again, the, the debt is actually going to be issued by the city. This right. agreement's been written in case the Lura was to actually issue debt. Um, but since Lura does not plan to do so, this this provision will not come into play. But um, And never, so why is it there? Standard language for uh, this is the exact type of agreement that the school district has with other uh, urban renewal authorities. And so if, in fact, Lura were to issue debt, because that is a secondary uh, way for us to, to deal with the obligation that we've made with the developer, we want to do it first through the city, but if we had to do it through Lura, then that would come into play. So it's likely under the current uh, under the current. Um, plan that we have in place that this will not come into play, but if Lura were to issue debt, then we, it would still be, again, it's primary that we pay the debt first. Right, is, I understand that. No, no, I, I do I do understand that. But um, I'm wondering whether or not it would be, um, make the agreement a little bit stronger to say that we're going to give you, you know, 60 or 90 days notice that we're requesting it because it doesn't actually talk about the procedure for they it says that they have to give written consent but how would they I guess we would there's nothing in here that outlines the procedure and usually the IGA say who's going to do what and when they're going to do it so Mayor Coombs, Councilmember Levinson, Sandy Cedar, Assistant City Manager. So in this case, you know, obviously we'd have to have their permission before we took anything. So that's really where the notice comes in. Is once we realize if the if the lure were to issue the debt, and we realize that we're, we weren't getting enough tax increment to actually pay the debt, then we would issue a notice to the school district saying, hey, this is what we need to do at this point, and the school district would have to consent. So the time frame of that could be variable depending on what's happening with the lure and what's happening with that debt at the time. There's also a, se a severability clause. There's also um, different ways that people can get out of this notice, the term of agreement and the days in which um, you know performance has to occur. So. I mean, the reality of it is that if we can't pay the debt, we can't pay their mill levy override. And so it's at that point that we need to go back and talk to them about that. Okay. Well, I guess that I just was, I was just curious of why sometimes we have such procedures spelled out in IGAs and it seemed lacking in this. So um, my suggestion would be that we at least put something in there that, you know, and I don't know where you would put it. So. I would have to leave that up to the attorneys to say, you know, that we would give them some kind of notice. Because are we going to have another? Are we going to have another IGA with the school district between the city and the school district if we're going to issue the debt? No, Councilmember Lewison. No, this is the IGA between the Lura and the school district, basically saying that we are not going to take the school mill levy override portion right. and apply it towards tax increment, okay. which then obliges yeah. the city to do so. I guess I, I just would like to see something um, maybe uh, within the subordination clause that said that, you know, 
um, that we would give them some kind of a written notice that that you know we would request it within a certain amount of time, and that's all. Just because I just remember seeing the uh, IGA with Boulder County about the reconstruction of the Sunset um, Street Bridge and how specific. And at this state, people are going to do this, and at this state, people are going to do that. So. I just was thinking we need that specific, specificity, whatever it is. Councilor Bagley, thank you, Mayor Coombs. I, I guess uh, I guess I'm reading a little different. Yeah. I, I'm reading it as uh, any indebtedness incurred by Lura, meaning that if we owe people money, not just our debts. I read this clause to mean that if we owe people money, they get paid first. And I think that uh, that's how it should read, um, because uh, the taxes are kind of like the uh, profits of a company. And you don't get your dividends if you don't pay off your expenses. And I think that this agreement, you know, we haven't been discussed, and uh, I've heard people criticize the TIF um, because we're taking away from the schools. But what this agreement does, in paragraph two on page two, as well as paragraph three of page two and three, Basically, what it's doing is saying that mill levy override that we passed back in November of 2012, um, we're giving all that to the schools from the new mall. And so this agreement essentially enables the city to give our school districts money for our schools. And then on page three in paragraph six, it says not only that, but they promise to use these monies for the schools and the things in our city. And so I think it's I think it's only I, I I would suggest that we don't change anything in that paragraph because we do need to make it subordinate to make sure we pay off our debts. And so I think we should just vote on it and and pass it and get it going, build our mall and help our schools. Councilor Mayor Santos. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and with that great explanation, I move resolution 2013-117. Second. Okay, it's been moved to second. Councilmember Madison. Um, I was just making a suggestion that, you know, we write in something about saying that we're going to give them a certain amount of time notice, not to eliminate the subordination um, clause altogether, but just to be maybe a little bit more specific. So, and I and I read it, and I understand the rest of the uh, items, too. Okay, let's vote. Okay, pass the seven to zero. Now, your final item on tonight's agenda is general business. It's a discussion of the final list of city council member appointments to internal and external boards. Sandy Cedar, assistant city manager, is going to help me out with this discussion. There was one conflict we found after um, council's direction. Yeah, I could just stand here. <laughs> council member, Mayor Council Member Sandy Cedar, assistant city manager. So we did find that there was one conflict when we put everything on a calendar, uh, and that was with Council Member Finley's appointments. Um, and so in speaking with her before the meeting, uh, two of her boards meet basically within the same hour. One is the Museum Advisory Board, and the other one was AIPP, correct? Planning, planning sorry, Planning and Zoning. I can get in there. Um, and so in talking with her, she said she would be interested in staying on Planning and Zoning. And so if someone is interested in taking the Museum Board, uh, advisory board at this point, that would be the time to either make an appointment or if you're interested and we have sticky notes if you'd like to officially vote on having somebody. Councilman Lewison. I have another question. Um, and I don't, and I remember giving the uh, new schedule for Channel 8. We have some additional meetings, don't we, um, Council Member Finley, for Channel 8 that aren't reflected. Didn't we have some additional meetings coming up in 2014? And, um, and I know that most of those will be on a Wednesday, but I can't remember if they're all the first Wednesday of the month. So, um, I mean, I would I would like to do the museum board. I like I was uh, on the museum board as a citizen um, on the advisory board many many moons ago. So I would be willing to do the uh, museum advisory board, but I I don't want to volunteer to do that until I can make sure there's no conflict with uh, those additional dates from Cable Trust. Thank you, Mayor Coombs. I, uh, I served on the museum board, loved the museum board, very energetic group of people, and uh, they, they love what they do. I'm, I'm also willing, uh, if, if Councilmember 
I, no, I'm not asking you to defer. What I'm just saying is do it. If it doesn't work with your schedule, I'm willing to do it because I know there's a conflict. And so I don't want to end tonight having Council Member Finley going, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? So I, 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 would, I would move that... Yes, uh, I would move that we allow Councilmember Levison to do it in the event that she decides not to. I'll volunteer to do it. I enjoyed that board. Okay. Well, I'll second that motion. Unless there's somebody else who wants to do it, in which case I don't want to do it. <laughs> okay. All right. I've been on it. It's a great board. Let's vote. Oops. <laughs> Passes seven to zero. <laughs> You're welcome. I love it. How did that show Bonnie voting now when it was actually me voting now? I've been voting for you. <laughs> really? Interesting. How did she show Bonnie voting now when that was actually Okay. What? what I want you to do. Can we do a mock vote real fast? Can you show that vote again? Oh, channel eight. Yeah. No, so can we do another vote? Can we do a re-vote and let's see what that looks like? Just do another another vote. You can switch your votes too at this point if you want to test. That's me. That's you. Did you vote no? I have voted no. Bonnie, what are you voting? Bonnie has a Bonnie has. Okay. I voted yes. Okay. Is that correct? That is not correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Just making sure. Okay. And I believe we still need a motion on the rest of the appointments. That's Mayor Santos. That was the internal boards, correct? So we need a motion on the external boards. I move. So I move that we accept the boards and commissions for internal and external as presented Second. and as we decided. Second. All right. Let's vote. Okay. <laughs> Pass the seven to zero. Didn't we also have to approve our change of ca the calendar? Uh, okay, that's okay. Okay. Sorry. All right. <laughs> okay, I guess it's time for um, final call. Public invited to be heard. Is there anybody from the public who'd like to come speak at this time? Seeing no one, I'll closed public invited to be heard. So now it's time for mayor and council comments. Are there any council member comments? Council member Finley. Thank you, Mayor Coombs. I would just like to remind everyone to continue to shop local for Christmas. We have a lot of great stores in town and uh, unusual uh, presents that you can find, not, not the stuff that you get just anywhere. So shop local and uh, if you get hungry, you might want to try Richelli's Italian Deli. Has anybody been there yet? It sounds wonderful. Uh, it's at 338 Main Street. The description is they have authentic Italian slow food. So that sounds good to me. Um, plan on trying that this week. Thank you. Councilor Robinson. Yes. Um, I... Uh, was absent um, last week. I'm sorry, was not here. Was able to watch some of it on uh, live stream on Channel 8. Um, but I didn't have the opportunity to wish anybody a happy Thanksgiving, so I'll do that in arrears. And also wish everybody in the community who celebrates Hanukkah a happy Hanukkah. We've got, well, tonight and tomorrow night left. And then it's all over till next year. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out, um, you voted on minutes of November 12th, and the minutes reflected that I was in attendance at the top of the minutes, and I was not. I was surprised because I knew I was in Seattle, and yet it showed I was here, except each of the individual votes did show I was absent. But I just would like to um, note that for the record. Okay, I guess I'll like to uh, make a motion. Um, to uh, 
uh, approve a raise of two and a half percent for our uh, municipal judge, uh, Diane Vanderhees. Vanderhees, excuse me. Okay, let's. Councilmember Bagley. Uh, could I just ask that you clarify your motion? Is it two and a half percent on? On basically your base salary, not. On your base salary? Yes. Including or not including the deferred compensation? No, it all, I'll just go to base salary. Okay, just clear, clarify. Thank you. Okay, let's vote. Okay, that passes uh, six to one with Councilmember Santos descending. Okay, anybody, any other further council comments? Oh, yes, actually. Councilmember Wagner. Thank you, Mayor Combs. Um, I, I, uh, I uh, think I might have gotten us in a little bit of a pickle. Um, uh, I told the Salvation Army that the council would be ringing bells. I, I, I was on a stage. There were four of us there. I'm sure it was noticed. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's true. Gabe, yeah, we were, well, five of us were there. Um, uh, so they want us to ring the bell. And so my, my question is, um, are we willing to ring the bell? I, I told them I was willing and you know, we were willing. So my question is, what's the process for maybe you know, finding time for the council members? We promised them a day, um, which I don't know what a day is, but maybe a couple hours each. Actually, you have to no know. We want to know. We'll start right now. So I guess my question is, um, uh, she gave us, um, we have a contact name and number. If we gave that to you, Sandy, could you just coordinate something and tell us to show up and be charitable? Yes. Well, they gave us really cool bells. Well, we're all ready. So that's it. You didn't get a bell? I'll find one. I'll make sure you get your bell. All right. Thank you. Well, I've done that before for Rotary, and if it is really cold, two hours is a long time for a shift. I would suggest a shorter shift of an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, I think an hour is plenty of time to be. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I would also like to uh, say that I went on a really incredible tour of uh, Entrado, uh, a company that does 911 call centers across. They're a pretty impressive company. Uh, they got all kinds of technology, and I was just totally blown away by all their triple redundancies of their power systems and communication systems. And um, yeah, I was a a really uh, a neat meeting, and I sure, certainly enjoyed going there and seeing that company. Okay, uh, city manager, any additional remarks? Actually, we do have one more. Sean would like to update everyone on the uh, target industry study. Oh, okay. Mayor Council, I uh, just wanted to give you an update that the uh, target industry analysis, which you all approved in uh, November, is well underway. And um, our consulting team, Avalanche Consulting, um, it has been gathering information from national, state, and local databases um, for the last month um, since that contract was approved. And our real first public kickoff will actually be next week. So you all will be able to hear them um, during city manager's report, give an overview of their work here, as well as five different focus group meetings that will take place. Place. Um, I'll send you all the schedule um, either this evening or um, tomorrow um, of those focus groups if you'd like to plug in if you're not already on one. Um, we have quality of life focus group, um, also a presentation at the Longmont Area Economic Council board meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. Overall business focus group, uh, talent pool focus group, workforce and young professionals a small business entrepreneurship focus group, and then a uh, focus group specific to utility, safety, transportation, and nonprofits in the community. So if any of those interest you and you'd like to attend those, um, I'll send you the schedule, and you can let me know. And But again, you will get your own presentation um, at the council meeting next week. So, And we do have about 75 people involved, so I wanted to make sure you had a heads up about that in case you start hearing about it from your constituents. All right, thank you. 
City Attorney, any comments? No comments, Mayor. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Dude, really, Sean? We know the City Attorney's not up for a raise. Thank you.